Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers, and welcome. In this week's training, we're going to be building a dynamic profit and loss statement from scratch in front of your eyes, and we're going to be able to change those dates and print that report, all starting with just a list of transactions. It's going to be a great training, so let's get started. All right, thank you for joining me today. A dynamic profit and loss statement can be very powerful to use in any type of organization for any type of purpose. As long as you have a, some expenses or transactions or a list or a general ledger, we can create a profit and loss from that. And today I'm going to show you how to do that, creating a dynamic profit and loss. In fact, we're going to do that from scratch. All we're starting out with is a list of income and expenses and our profit and loss sheet is completely blank. So we're gonna build that from scratch while you watch every macro, everything. And basically what we're starting out with is a list of income and expenses based on a transaction date. We have an account name, we have a description, which is generally, we have an amount, and then we also have an account type. Now in the, our type of accounting, we pretty much have uh, three or four types of accounts. In this case, we have three. We have income, which is the money coming in. We have cost of goods sold, also known as COGS. Cost of goods sold are generally direct expenses from either the material that are products that you are creating or the labor that you perform for the service. Those are direct expenses, generally cost, and they go right under the income. And then of course, income minus cost of goods sold is your gross profit. Then of course, we have other expenses. Other expenses could be utilities or rent that are not directly related to your product or service. And they can be like office labor, office rent, utilities, things that are not specific to your product or service. Those would be called expenses. Office lease, uniform, and things like that, taxes. Those are generally considered expenses. And then of course, once you have your gross profit minus your expenses, you get your net profit. And so we're gonna build a profit and loss that details all of those, and we're gonna do it from our from scratch so we're going to just start out in fact i have a completed version so we can look to see what we're trying to create and so we can show exactly how that let's go ahead and pull that up i've got that under sample and basically this is what we're going to end up with a profit and loss so we're going to have our income we're going to list all of our income then of course we're going to get our total income we are going to then list all of our cost of goods sold, C-O-G-S for short. We're going to list all of those. We're going to get our total. And then, of course, our income minus our cost of goods sold is going to be our gross profit, gross profit. And, of course, then we're going to list out our expenses, all the expenses based on a specific from and to date. That's going to get us our total expenses. And then of course we have our total net profit. And that is gonna be generated dynamically so that when you delete that, all of our conditional formatting, all the rows are automatically dynamic. Then all we have to do is refresh the report and that's gonna get us our totals again right back. So I'm really excited to show that to you. So we have two, we have a sample sheet, which is where we're gonna be creating it from, of course. And then we have our profit and loss statement and we have our profit and loss, which is completely blank. So let's get started building this report. Again, this is the report that we wanna build and we're gonna build it from scratch right here. So we'll refer back to our sample often. So what we wanna do is we wanna create a title row. So we'll create this and we'll call this profit and loss statement. And we'll uh, bring that across to probably all the way over to J or I, J let's say, and then we're gonna merge and send to that so we get that merged. We will go ahead and put that in the middle there and increase the font. So I'll bring this down while we're working with it. And then we'll increase the front font here perhaps till about that. And then it's a little bit too big. We'll change it to maybe Cambria, something like that. Now let's set the background so we can get a nice background. We're gonna format the cell so we can get a fade and we're gonna go fill and then we want fill effects. So we can get a nice fade effect. And we'll use a three color fade effect. So we're going to use blue. So we'll use this middle blue as one and then we're gonna use the medium blue as negative. So we're gonna go from darker to lighter here on a horizontal fade. So that's gonna cover our first. 
And then our second line, we're going to do something, but just a little bit. So we're going to right click that. We're going to format the cells. We're going to do a very similar fade, fill, fill effects. Then we're going to use, start out with the end color. Remember, we ended up with this color. We're going to go to a lighter, just the lightest blue there. We're going to fade that. That's going to be our for our second fade. And then we've got one more to go. I want to fade from that light blue all the way to the white. So we're going to format those cells. Bring it up for you. Fill. Again, fill effects. And then, of course, we're going to go from the blue, and then we're going to go to actually to a white, to just a white. So that way we get the full fade effect. Okay, so now we've got our fade effect. Now I would like to also, I want to cre create some from and to dates, from and to, because that's going to be where our statement comes from based on whatever from and to dates we set. So we can put that in, let's say, from here. And then we'll skip over and we'll go to to. So that's going to, going to be our from and to date settings, and we're going to write justify those. And then we're going to make these fields white. We want these fields white. Okay, we're going to set our borders now. So we're going to highlight both the from and to, right click, and go to format cells. And we want to format the borders. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select a blue. We're going to surround it with a line, and then we're going to use a dotted line through the center, vertical through the center. That's going to give us our, our effects for the from and to date. And we'll set these two as short dates, as the formats, but you can set them however you want. So that we run one, and then, of course, we can do six, one, and it's automatically going to be Okay, so we're good with that. Next up, I want to set a title. I want to set an area for a title. We can use something like this, B through I. So I want to set this. So let's merge instead of that. That's going to be the report title. It's going to be a dynamic report title based on these dates. So how would we do that? Let's do that using a, using a formula. We can do that. So equals, and then we're going to use parentheses profit. and loss okay and then now uh, let's put a dash in and then we want from right what's the from date and then a space and then end parentheses and from this date and then one more and another and and then a space to space and another and sign and then the two date. Now these are not going to be formatted just right just yet, so we have to format them. Of course, Excel treats those dates as numbers, so we need to format these in order to. We'll make this a little bit bigger, and then we'll make it bold. But we, so we need to certainly format those. That's not going to work yet. So let's do that. We can do that now. Of course, you're going to format your dates however you want to. So we're going to format them using the text control. So E3, comma, and then what formats do we want? Let's do MM slash DD. And of course, you can format your dates any way you like. So I'm just going to use that for now. And we're going to copy and paste and do the same thing for the from date. So we can copy this. And then we'll do text, parentheses, and then we'll just paste it because we're going to use the same format. All right, let's see how that looks. That looks very good. That's what I want. I'm going to give this a white font and a dark background so that it's contrasting in our report. Formatting the cells. And we're going to give it a font. Bold is fine, but white font. And then I'm going to fill the background with a darker color. So fill effects. Go here to the darker blue and then to a, a little bit lighter, slightly lighter here. There we go. That, that should work okay. That's going to give us a very nice contrast for our report. Now, when we change the dates, it's automatically going to change in here. So when we change this to February, and you can change it. Of course, if you wanted to have longer months, we've got enough space. We could easily change this format to using the long months. So that's fine, too. So we have that ability as well. All right, so now we have our title, and we have our date fields, and we have our report title. So we're good with that. Now the first line is going to be income. It's always going to be income, so that's going to be fixed. And we can put that under C, income. That's not going to change because we're always going to list our income first. And this column is going to take our, it's going to take all of our uh, total rows. So we're, we're going to, we can write justify that. So income is always going to be here. 
And then let's take a look at our sample here. So we have income here, and then we want our total income accounts, and H is going to be our numbers. And then so we're going to build this dynamically. So that's, what, that's the look I'm trying to go for now. So we can see how that's going to work. So let's go back into our sample here. And we can start building this. But before we do that, I want to set a few named ranges. So let's go into the transaction so we can see. And of course, let's go ahead and save our work. Back into the transactions. Here, what I, what I want to do is I want to run an advanced filter. So I want to take all of this data until the last row. In this in case, the last row is 360, 367. So I want to use an advanced filter. And I want to set some criteria. What is the really, there's only criteria, and that's the transaction date. So I want to put a transaction date in here, like greater than or equal to, equal to one, one, right, two, zero, one, nine. And then I want to do a transaction date of probably less than, less than or equal to 10, one, two, zero, one, nine. So once we have this criteria, I want to take all of this data here and run an advanced filter. And I want the results of that based on those two dates to appear here. So that's what I want. So I want only those transactions that fall within these two dates to appear here. Then what I want to do is I want to run some numbers based on, based on these results only. I'm only concerned about when I focus on my profit and loss, I'm only concerned about the, the transactions that fall within those two dates. So here we have some totals. Now we have some summaries. Here's all the accounts that I have, and here's what type. So the first four, income accounts, cost of goods sold, and expense accounts. So I've just listed a few. They're just basically listed what I have here. But what I want is I want summaries based on this. In other words, how much of total income. But I don't want to use this. Right? I want to use the results. So for example, let's copy and paste some results just for just so we have some building. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put some results right in here as if there was a filter. So, so right click and then I'm going to paste the values. I just want to paste those results right in here. So what I want to do is based on the results, when we run our advanced filter, let's bring this back up. When we run, I want these totals here, the filtered sum or the results sum. We can call that, probably call that results sum. Results because they're based on just those results. So I want to know how many materials sold here. I want to know, in just in this, I want to know how many, how much labor was sold based on the results. So let's do that. Let's create a named range based on the data, based on the account, and based on the amount, only in the results. So let's do that. Into the formulas, name manager, we create a new, let's call this results account. And then let's give it a name range. In fact, this is not going to be, this is our amount. So let's highlight this. But I want it dynamic. I only want it to focus. We're going to include the first row, just in case there's no data. And then we're going to go, but it's going to be an offset. So we're not going to use this entire range. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to start with off. Let's, let's bring this here and make it bigger so you can see it. Okay, so we're going to start with offset. And we're going to start out with AK2. That's a good start. But the 2 is the header. We don't want to include the header. So we're going to do comma 1, which sets it one row below. Then comma, comma, and then count A. I want to count all the text. And I've copied that range. Starting from A2 all the way to, let's say, AK99. And we'll just create a very large row so it encompasses all the possible data. All right, so we've included the header row, but in this case, we don't want to include the header row. The reason is we don't want to count the header row, but we do want to include the header row, just so that in case it gets deleted or something, there's never it doesn't cause a ref error. Minus one, so this minus one excludes it, excludes the header. So that's just how we take care of it. And then we do comma one, comma one for the row. Okay, so let's take a look at how that looks. Let's click OK and tab over there. And see, okay, that's perfect. That's just so now we have all of the accounts. Now we have all the accounts. Now I want to, I'm basically going to copy, copy this formula. I'm going to create one more. I'm going to call it results amount. New results amount. Because I want those results. And I'm going to 
paste it over here, and then I'm just going to change the columns. In this case, we're using AM. AM is where our mounts are, so we're going to change this to AM and AM and one more. And here, AM. So now we've we're just so basically we have these two name ranges which are going to help us. Click OK, and then we'll tab over just to check it. All right, it looks correct. It includes all, encompasses all of our data. All right, good. So we, now we have two. Now we have results account and results amount. We can close that. So what I want to do here is I want to make a sum based on all the materials sold. Okay, we're going to start. A, we're going to use a sum if equals sum if. And what is the range? The range of the criteria is going to be our results account. And what is the criteria? What is the account we're looking for? In this case, it's materials sold. And now what is the sum range? Well, that's results amount, right? We're going to results amount because we're going to search. So now we know, let's take a look at that again. Results account, this is what we're looking up. And we're looking up this value in this account. So we're looking up materials sold in this. And then we're going to total the amount. So basically, what it's going to do is going to look for all the materials sold here. One more here. So it's going to take these two items. It's going to total them up based on the amount. And so that is why we get our 9363. Now all we have to do is copy down the formulas all the way down here. Because, because we've used this, it is not absolute, it's going to go for every row below. So all we need to do is right click, copy, and bring down that formula here. I don't want to double click because I want to change it. So we're just going to paste the formulas. There we go. Now we have our totals for each account. Now we have our totals. So that's great. But I also want to know the total income for this. The total income. What is the total income? Well, that would be these three accounts, right? These three accounts. That's our total income. So we can do that here. Equals sum. It's just a simple sum. So it's nothing. So it's just going to, we're going to take these three and that's going to be our total income. Now what is our total cost of goods sold? Again, sum of just our cost of goods sold, which is these three right here. And then of course our gross profit, we know our gross profit is going to be equals the income minus the cost of goods sold here. That is our gross profit. How about expenses? Well again, there's these remaining expense accounts, so equals the sum of our remaining expense accounts here. So now we've got the totals, and of course our net profit is our gross profit minus our expenses equals gross profit minus expenses. Okay, great. Now we've got our totals. Now we've got set. But what I want to do is I want to bring these very easily into our profit and loss. I want to put our total income here. I want to put our total cost of goods here. And I want to put our gross profit. But we don't know where it's going to be located, so we can't use a formula because this is dynamic. If we have tons of cost of goods sold, and if we have tons of expenses, it's going to go down. So what I want to do is I want to name these ranges and then use that named range in the code itself. And I'll show you how that's done. But what we, the best thing to do is name those ranges so we can easily use them in our VBA and that's easily recognizable. So let's name this. Oh, I've already named it in the previous one. Let's go back to our sample here. They look the same. Okay, so this is the one we're working on. There's no named ranges. So we're going to call this TOT income. All right, now we've got this cell name range total income. Now this one, I want to call it TOT, T-O-G-S, total cost of goods sold. We're going to call this one simply gross profit. And we're going to call this total expenses, T-O-T expenses. And this is going to help us in our code, total expenses. And of course, we have this one, our last one is called net profit. Now I can use those ranges within our VBA code. It's going to be very easy. We don't have to use totals. It's automatic. And of course, as our data here changes, everything else changes in this. So it's automatic. It's really helpful. But we want it in a profit and loss statement. So what, again, what we're going to be doing now, we're going to be ready for the code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out the last row here. Whatever the last row is. I'm going to run, I'm going to run an advanced filter based on the dates here and here. So we're going to take our profit and loss, we're going to take this date, we're going to take this date, and we're going to put it here and here. Then we're going to run our advanced filter and get our results based on those dates, which is the, only the transactions between those dates. 
Then I've got all my transactions. Then all I need to do in the code is I need to run a few loops. I'm going to run, I'm going to look for any income here, and I'm going to add the income. Then I'm going to look for any cost of goods sold, and I'm going to add the cost of goods sold. Then I'm going to loop through this and add all the expenses. So that is how we look, look back at our sample. And here's, here's our sample. So again, we're going to loop it. We're going to look for all the incomes. And we're going to add the name. And we're going to add the amount. Then we're going to add a total income. Then we're going to add the title, cost of goods sold. We're going to loop again. We're going to add all the cost of goods sold. Add the names and the totals. Then we're going to add a total cost of goods line. Then we're going to add a gross profit line. Then we're going to do our third and last loop, which is expenses. We're going to add that title here. We're going to run through all the account looking for expenses. Not only looking for expenses, but I want to know expenses that are not zero. So we need to run two checks. One, is it an expense? Two, is the balance over zero? So for example, if there's a zero balance here, I don't want to include it. So we want to make sure that's the second check. So we're going to run both of those checks. So it's relatively easy in the code once we have all of our data properly formatted. So we did a good amount of work here making sure that we have a list of our accounts, we have the account types, and we have the amounts based on the filtered results. We also have our totals so we can use those. So now we are ready to write some code. So let's start out and create a macro into the developers tab. If you don't have the developers tab you can go ahead into the file options and of course the customizer room makes sure developers is selected here. That will get you to developers. Alt F11 will get you there, or Visual Basic here. And let's go ahead, and this is the sample. So let's let's close that. We don't need that workbook open anymore. This is our workbook here. It has no modules. So let me close the sample so we can just focus on just one. Here's the sample, so let's close that out. We don't need that anymore. And we can focus just on this one workbook. Now we have this one workbook with no code in here at all. We can add a module, right click insert module we want to name this module you want to name all of your modules so into the properties bring this over let's just give it a mm, call profit and loss make sure that the name of this module is not the name same name as your macro you want to keep those separate keep them different macro names and module names should always be different so we can close that out now that we've named it we'll create a start with a new macro sub Let's call it profit, loss, refresh. Okay, so now we've got our macro name. Now we need to dimension a few statements. So let's focus on that. And we can start off uh, dimensioning our uh, P&L row. I need to always know what row we are on in our profit and loss. So we need to dimension the P&L row as long. We also want to know the last transaction row because we're going to use our advanced filter. So we know that we need to know that last row. So we'll call this last transaction row as long also. That's important. And of course, I need to know the results, the last results row. Actually, we don't need to know that. Uh, dimension the account row. Account row, that's important because we're going to loop through the account row. So we're going to need to know what row we're on when we loop through that account row as long. And what is the account row? Let me go ahead and show that to you just so we know what we're going to be looping through. Here's the account row. We're going to be looping through from 3 to 17. We're going to loop through that three different times. One for income, one for cost of goods sold, and one for expenses. So we need to keep track of what row we're on. So we need to mention that as well. All right, moving ahead. I also want to dimension. Uh, actually, that's it for the dimensions. We're good to go. We're going to go with with sheet one primarily we're going to be focused on sheet one is our profit and loss although we will be working a lot with sheet two but we can dimension sheet one for now and what I want to do is uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to clear all of the contents of our existing report if there are any there is any data here in our profit and loss I want to clear that out I don't want to clear this income because we're always going to start out with income and so that'll stay fixed but from B7 to I and down, we do want to clear that out. So we'll go from B7 to I, 9999 or something like that. Okay, so we can start at dot range because we're working with, of course, sheet 1, B7 through I. And then uh, let's go with 9999. And we're going to clear those contents out. Clear the contents. Okay? And not clear, we don't want to clear everything. We just like conditional formatting. We're going to need to keep when we add those. So that's going to clear 
the existing report. Since we're going to be redrawing it every time, we want to clear the existing data. I also want to know the last transaction row, the last transaction row of our existing transactions in sheet 2. So that's going to be sheet 2. And then we're going to run that from B, B, and then 99999 all the way up. We're going to do a, a dot end XL up. That's going to get us our last row, our last, last transaction. For our advanced filter, we need to know that. Our last transaction row, let me show you what that is. That's sheet two, of course. And we're going to use B. Right? We can't use A because there's nothing in here. B, and then control all the way down. 367 is our last reject. But we need to get that. I mean, when you add transactions, we won't know what our last row is automatically. So we need to dimension that into a variable, and that variable is called last transaction row. And next up, I want to clear any previous criteria. What is that? Well, that's just basically the to and from dates in our sheet too. Since we're going to be running a brand new advanced filter, we need to clear this criteria here. I'm going to clear those dates. So AA3 and AB3 need to be cleared out. We can do that with a line of code. So let's go ahead and add that in. Sheet 2. Dot range AA3, 3 through AB3, dot clear contents. We're going to clear out clear contents. Okay, and that's going to clear previous criteria. I also want to clear the results. So the results are also looking in sheet 2, sheet 2, dot range, and our results are going to be looking in AJ3, and I'll show you that, AJ3, where our results are starting, and then you're going to go all the way to AN and grab the last row, which whatever it could be. We'll just go with a high number. Dot clear contents. And we're going to clear previous results. The results are also in sheet two. It's going to be the results of our advanced filter, which is going to be here, starting at AJ3, all the way to AN and all oh, high rows. So we've covered that. I want to clear this data out. So when we run our new advanced filter, we put in our new criteria and then all of a sudden uh, the results of our filter will come here so we've got that covered now we are ready all right so now let's go ahead and put in the dates so what I want to do now is I want to take these dates here from our profit and loss here and I want to put them right here and then that's for the two and then excuse me that's for the from and then the two of course I want to put in right here and I want to make sure to add less than or equal to how greater than or equal to in either one of these, greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. I want to add those in to make sure that our dates are equal or within that specific range. So we can add that in. But what if it's blank? Well, if it's blank, I want to add a very early date. Maybe if it's blank, I want to include all the dates before that. So we should start out with a very early date, way before any of our transactions begin. And of course, if it's left blank in the two, I want to include all of the possible transactions up to a very high date. So we can do that with some lines of code, with an if-then statement in the code. So we can start out like if dot range, and of course she one E3 is empty, E3, that's our from date, E3, does not equal empty, then sheet 2 dot range AA3, A3, that's our from 3, dot value equals parentheses greater than or equal to and parentheses and and quotation marks I should say and what else and the date value which is dot range e3 so we know that dot range e3 value but what if it's blank this is if it's not blank but what if it is blank well if it is blank I want to add a large date on that so else Right? If, it's, if it's not blank, then what do we add? Else, sheet 2.range AA3.value equals, let's move that over a little bit. What's it going to equal? Well, we'll put, probably put greater than perhaps 1, 1, 2000 or whatever. So you can do equals and then quotation mark greater than or equal to, and then you can put an early date like 0, 1, that's 0, 1, plus 2,000, okay? So we'll put in like 2,000. But whatever, whatever date is the well before your first transaction. 
we're going to put that. So if it's not, if it's blank, we're going to set it to a very early date. And that is going to be our from date. Now what about our to date? To date is going to be very similar, so let's copy and paste this line of code. And then we'll enter that right below. And we'll put it right in here. If, except we're going to be focused on some different, and our from date, of course, is located in G3. G3. Let's take a look at that so we know where we are focused on. G3 is our to date. Our from date is E3. So we did the from date. Now we're going to do the to date. Now we're going to do the to date. I don't get you confused there. All right. So let's go. Let's now add G3. If G3 is not empty, then AB3, right? Our criteria is going to be AB equals G, of course, changes to G, does not equal and change this to B because we're focused on B. Remember, we're going to bring the information over to sheet two. So our G3, we're going to transfer over to here, AB3, AB3. But we need to add, in this case, we need to add less than or equal to, less than or equal to. So we need to make a modification on that. So in this case, it's going to be less than or equal to, or less than in this case here less than or equal to, and we, of course we want to change the date. In this case, we want to give it a very, very high date, so perhaps something like 2030 or something like that, as long as it's beyond your to date. Okay, so now we've covered both conditions. If, it, if a user leaves it empty, it's going to cover all the transactions, either before or after. So we've covered that. Now we've got the criteria, and now we are ready to run our advanced filter. And of course, our advanced filter is going to include the header row. So when we run our advanced filter, we're going to include B2 all the way to F in the last row. We're going to include our both of our criteria here, which is going to include AA2 through AB3. Then we're going to place those results right here into AJ2 all the way to AN2. And our results are going to go there. And of course, we want our unique to be true. So that's going to be our advanced filter. Let's go ahead and write that line of code. So we're going to say sheet two dot range B2. That's our first row, including our header, all the way through F and our last transaction row dot advanced filter. And we're going to copy, copy it. We, we don't want it in place. We're going to copy those. And we want the criteria. What is the criteria? We just went over that criteria. Range equals sheet two dot range A2, which includes the headers, through AB3. So that is our criteria. And now ready to copy to range. Copy to range colon equals sheet two dot range and what is the range a range of course is our last results which is aj2 through an2 aj2 through an2 that's where our results are going to go and the last thing we want unique to equal true so we want unique values all right let's fix that and we need an and sign there okay all right so now we have our advanced filter we've got it there let's take a look at that that looks good we've got everything to range we've got let's go over that we're going to take our original data all the way to the last row we're going to copy that using the criteria both in AA2 actually AA3 and AB3 which is our from and to dates we're going to then bring that to the results over in this row AJ2 through AN and we're going to use unique values which are true so that covers it. All right, now we are ready. Now let's go ahead. Now, now that we've run the advanced filter, we need to get to the last results row, the last results row, just in case I want to make sure if they're less than three. But we can do, we, we don't need to define that because we're just going to use it once. So we can say if sheet two dot range a, and our results are going to go through AJ, right? So we could say AJ99999. I'm just checking for the last row of our results in case there is no data. Dot end X, XL up dot row is less than, less than what? Well, less than two, less than three because our headers are in row two. Less than three, then go to no data or no results. One more clear results. 
So go to no results. And what the, we want to do is skip everything else. So let's go all the way down here and just put in no results. We want it skipped in case there's no data. And what that means is, let's go through the results. If the results, in the results here, if the last row is less than three, that means there's no data. So then skip. We don't need to do anything else in our PNL because it is no data or no results. So that's why we put that in there so we can skip everything that we're about to do just in case there is no data. All right. Now, assuming that, of course, there is results, we can continue on. And now that we have that, we can now set our PNL row. Our PNL rows, uh, it's going to be changing each time, but it's going to start out at seven. Our profit and loss, our first row is seven. That's the first row here, seven. Let's go ahead and pull up the sample again just so we can see because I'm going to be referring back to it a little bit and a few times here. So our first row of data is seven. So I want to put in D, I want to put the account, I want to look for, I want to run a loop, get the income accounts, put them in D, and I want to put the amounts in H. Of course, remember, if there's an income and if there's a balance. So that's what we're going to focus on. So I'm just going to put that right in D here. So let's start out. So we need to set our profit and loss row as 7. This row is going to change as we move down. So we're going to set the initial row to 7. Let's do that here. We've already dimensioned that right here. P and L row equals 7. Set initial profit and loss row. Okay, so we're going to set that up. All right. Next up. Now we're ready to add in the income accounts. Add in income accounts. Okay, so we can we can set a specific loop now because we're going to loop, and we know it's three to seventeen. Why do we know it's three to seventeen? Because that's all of our accounts. That is all of our data here in transaction. It's, it's a sample, but it's the same thing. 3 to 17, starting at 3, going to 17. I'm going to loop through that three different times. The first one for income, second one for cost of goods sold, and third one for expenses. In your list, they may be mixed up. In my list, they're all organized, but you may have them mixed. So just in case they're mixed, we're going to run a loop. So theoretically, we could run the income only to the first three. But in reality, you might have income counts down here, down here, down here. It may not be an organized list like this. So I like to run through them all just in case, just looking, even though we know in reality that income is just the first three. But I want to get you the habit of running through all of those in case you have an income here or here or here or whatever. So it's kind of a little safer bet there. So we're going to run three through 17. We're going to check if M and the account row is income and and, and the account row is greater than zero, then include it. And that's what we're going to do. So let's set our loop first. So we're going to set it to four account row equals three to 17. And we'll close the loop. Always good to close the loop. Next account row. Now we can write inside our loop. And of course, we have to check here. If sheet two dot range M and the account row dot value equals income and remember and sheet two dot range n n here and account row dot value dot value does not equal zero then we can go ahead and add that row in there. Now we can add the row. Then we know it's not. So now we just want to type only the account balance is better income and over zero. Then dot range D, right? D is our first row, first row and where we want dot D and the report row, because our report row is going to be changing. P and L row, I should say. P and L row dot value. What does that equal? Well, that's going to equal M. It's going to equal right here. What is an M? And let's go ahead and get the and sign in there. And then, of course, we're going to copy this. We want our account M equals, right, M value. So, again, let's go look through that over. We're going to take D, L here, L, and I want to place that right here, right here in D. I want to put that right here, or in our, in our sample here, D right here. So I want to place it right there. So that's what we're going to do in the code. So we want to say D is equal to M. Actually, L, not L, not M. M is the account type. We want the account name, which is located in L. We want the account name located in L. 
So that's important. So we were going to bring that in. So we want the L's, L's the account name. The type is income. We have to make sure we're only including income accounts and of course the amount which is and so the next up now we've written the account name now let's go ahead and write the account balance the balance on that we'll just copy them out and change that so it's going to be in this case we want to add h h is where we're going to be located the amount and we're going to bring that amount all the way from n n right n so that's going to be our account value and this is going to be our account name right? so L and N so let's go ahead and look at that just in case right filtered we're going to take this amount from M from N and bring it over to our profit and loss we're going to put it right here in H and H is where we want to put that in our empty report it's going to be right here this is our sample this is our empty report all right, so that's what we want to do. Let's go back into the code. Now that we've added, now we've added one row, what do we need to do? Well, I need to increase the, the P and L row one because we're going to move to the next row. So P and L row equals P and L row plus one. We want to increase one more row. And that's it. That's all we have to do. We can run through that loop. That is our loop. Right? So once we're finished with all the income accounts, once we're finished adding, what do we want to do next? Let's look at our sample. Okay, we've added all our income. So what do we want to do next? Next, I want to put the total income. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to put the words total income in C, and I'm going to put the amount of that in H. So let's continue on to that. C and the report row, we've just added one, is going to be total income. So we've gone through the loop, so now we can continue dot range C we've already added one here so we're okay we're already on the next line C and the PL row equals total income now we have to add the amount in dot and the amount of course is in H H and the PL row equals what equals total income remember we named that range equals sheet two and I'll show you that in a second as soon as I write this dot range from sheet two total income that's a named range we set dot value so we have automatically we know the amount right we know the amount and so we can write it here there's a few ways to do it. then using the named range is very nice because we know we can look at the code and know exactly where that is where does that come from that comes from right here that named range, total TOT income right here. We're going to do the same thing for cost of goods sold, profit, because we've already named these ranges. So we can bring it, and we know we know we use the sum using this, so we know that it's going to be these three, these four, I should say. Make sure I include a four. Oh, one more. Okay, so now we've got four. It's going to be those four income accounts. There we go. So it's going to be those four income accounts, right? Let's check the others, double check, cost of goods sold. That looks good, those three, and expenses. All right, so we've covered all of the accounts correctly. So adding this total income is gonna add that named range, right? Now we're ready. Now what's next? Now that we've added the total income, what's next? Let's go back to our sample. We've added this line. What do we wanna do now? I wanna skip. We're on this row. I wanna add two rows, and then I wanna add the words cost, C-O-G-S, in C. So let's add those two rows right now. P and L row equals P and L row plus two. Okay, now we've added the row. Now we've added row, and now we're ready to add the, the cost of goods sold. Now we're adding add the cost of goods sold. So we can do that. So let's let's put some notes here. Skip one line. Add in COGS. Cost of goods sold. Okay, so we've got that, and we say dot range C. So we've already increased the row to and PL row value equals COGS. Okay, so now we've got the name in C. Of course, there's no total until we get to the bottom. So we can increase the PL row one more. So now we're going to start. So let's increase the row one more. We've got the name. Now we can increase it. Why do we want to increase it one more? I'll show you. So we've got the name here recovered. There's nothing else in that row. Now I want to increase one row and I want to add, I want to run the loop one more time. But this time we're going to look for cost of goods sold that are balances above zero. So we're going to run that loop and put them right here. 
before we get to the total. So we can do that. Let's go ahead and copy the paste we've already. Let's copy this and we'll just add it in again. In fact, um, let's copy that all and then we'll customize it according for the cost of goods sold. Copy that and then we're going to place it right down here. Now we can customize it. We're going to run the loop. That's not going to change. We're looking for a value, but we're not looking for income anymore. We're looking for CO, right, in M, COGS. We're looking for all of the accounts that are COGS in M, right here. COGS, we're in M. So we're looking for these three here. That's what we're looking for. And we want to make sure there's a balance above zero in N. So we need to check for that as well. So see it and n and the values here. So that's all right. Now we're ready to run. Now we can now everything else is the same here because we're adding the account number. We're adding that in. And of course, as we get down, of course, now it's not total income, it's total cost of goods sold. So you know, all right. And of course, we are using a different name range, total cost of goods sold. All right, let's check the name range to make sure that name is exactly right. Sometimes you may want to copy and paste it. Here in our, this is our sample, this is our statement. In our transactions, this is what we're looking for. We're going to copy that total cost of goods sold. Control C, just to make sure that everything is exactly right. And you can paste it right in here and making sure that this is going to add in total cost of goods sold amount. All right, so now we've added in the amount, we've added in the label. And we're going to skip to again. Let's go back to our sample and see where we are. Where we are in our sample, right here. So we've added in the total cost of goods sold. We've added in the amount here. Now we want to add in gross profit. So let's move one row down and in B, add the words gross profit and add the named range, which are which is gross profit. So that's one row down. So let's do that in our code. So we're here, right? In fact. We don't want to add one, we want to add just one row down, one row down, and we add in B, we want to add in in B, not C, but we're going to copy that. B, we want to add in here, gross profit, or total gross profit, gross profit. Okay, so now we have gross profit, we can use total, and now I want to put it in, in I, I want to put that amount in I. So let's do that. Changes the total, so it's clear. And in I, we want to add the amounts. I, we want to add those. So let's do that. We'll copy this. We can make the updates here. I, not H, of course. I, this this type of total cost goods sold. We want a separate column I. And of course, it's going to be gross profit. We've named that range gross profit. Let's check on that. Of course, we always like to double check to make sure that we have that, this is the sample, this is our, all right, gross profit, this is what we're looking for, gross profit, that's the named range we're gonna be adding, so that looks good, it looks correct. So we can add that, copy and paste, just to be sure, but I think the name is exactly right. I'm just showing you some good ways to double check everything. All right, now we've got our gross profit in what is next? Let's take a look at back at our sample here. Now we've got our gross profit in, all right, good. All we need to do is add expenses now. Let's skip two rows and start adding in our expenses. Back in there, skip two rows. We can copy this line here, paste it right in here, and then we need to run another loop. We can copy this, of course, and we can, let's copy all of this here, and uh, we will then paste it in and make those changes. All right, so we've got another, let's, uh, let's break this up a little bit. Add, make so it's clear, add in expenses. And this, of course, we're not looking for income here, we're looking for expenses, so we want to change the account type here to expenses. And of course, if the balance is there, that's right. All right, we've got everything up, account name, account value, that's right. Of course, we want to add in, it's not going to be income anymore, it's going to be total expenses. And of course, the named range is going to be TOT expenses. Let's check that, make sure we've got the name right. Back into our working version, expense is total expenses here. That's the name range, and that's the one we want to use. So back into the code, and just copy and paste that just to make sure we're on the right track. Then we can check out what's next. All right, now we've added in our total expenses in H, and C is the word. Let's check with our sample again so we can always 
So we've added this in C, we've added this in H. All we need to do is add in one more line, total net profit. B is where we're going to be putting the label, and of course I is where we're going to be putting the amount. So we just need to add, and of course that's one row down. Right? So one row, so we need to add one row for our profit and loss row, and then in the B we're going to add that, of course, we have here total gross profit. We can copy and paste this row, in fact, we can copy and paste both of these rows, and then make the necessary adjustments. So down here, in fact, this is going to be total net profit. And of course, our net profit label here, net profit, is going to go there. We'll check the name range just to make sure it's right, although I think it is, into the transaction, this is the sample. Here is our net profit, net profits are labeled there, so we're good on that. Now we've added in the net profit. All right, I think we are good to go. Let's go ahead and, and look at our code over. We've got that, we've got our net profit in here, and we've got uh, our no results in here, so we're good to go on that. Actually, it's expense, it's expense account, not expenses, so we need to make that adjustment. All right, now we can run our code, just click in here and run the code, and we'll take a look at the results into our application. That's our sample. All right, that looks good. Of course, we're still not done yet. We've got a lot, got a little bit of work, conditional formatting to do. We can get rid of these borders. Let's uh, get rid of the grid lines. That gives it a better look. Now what I want to do, let's take a look at back at our sample. What I want to do is I want to add some borders. And so for the totals, I want to, I want to add some differentiation here so that our total lines uh, I'll have a light blue and a border above because I think that's going to look really nice. So how do we do that? Well, let's look at what does these include. These include, there's a text here. So there's text in C, right? Our totals have it in B, but what about C? But so does our title. So does our titles. So how do we differentiate between our titles and our totals? Because what I want to do is I only want to add this blue color to our totals but not our income. So the way that this works is our totals have text in C and they have text in H. However, our titles, our title our account titles, have text in C but they have nothing in H. So we can use that differentiation to write a specific conditional formatting. Okay, so let's go back into our, this is our sample, so let's highlight all the rows. This is the rows that we're going to be focused on. You can go as down, far down as you want when you run yours and drop this down so we can focus on our conditional formatting and click on conditional formatting. We're going to create a new rule. And we're going to use a formula to create that rule. We're going to focus on right now in C, in column C, what I want to focus on. But I want to use every row in column C, so we want to take the absolute off the dollar sign before the six. So, and we can say it does not equal blank, but that's only half of it, right? The totals, right, we want only want to focus on the totals, right? So the, remember, the totals are different because the totals have a balance. So we're going to use and, there's two conditions, and C6 does not equal blank, and what else? H6. Why 6? Because 6 is the first row word that's going to apply. So we need to change that to 6. Of course, not the absolute. And H6 does not equal empty. So those two conditions, when those two conditions, I want to do something. I want to color it blue and I want to put a top border. So we're going to format that. And then we're going to fill it with a light blue. And then I'm going to put a border on it. And I only want to put the top border on it. So now let's go ahead and click OK. And that's the way we get. So you see now our income is not, our headers are not colored. Of course, you could color them. But our expenses, just our totals are because they have the balance. Next up, I want to color this. Well, what's, what's in common? Well, this is pretty easy because these are the only columns with the text in these specific rows. These are only text in these specific columns, which is B. So this is going to be a little bit easier. So again, let we want to use, we want to, apply this to the entire range. We're going to create a new conditional formatting and a new rule. In this case, we're going to use a formula. It's going to be simple. We don't need a. We don't need an and because it's only one condition. B, but it's still absolute, so get rid of the dollar sign because we want to do it for a row, does not equal empty. And in this case, what do we want to do? Well, I'm going to format a little bit darker. So we're going to go with the fill. I'm going to use a little bit darker blue. I'm going to use double borders, top and bottom in this case. And I want to change the font to bold and maybe give it a slightly different color, maybe a dark blue like this. So I wanted that, those to stand out. So now we're done. Now we have, there we go, 
Now we have just the rows in which, and the important thing in these is here. Let's go back into condition formatting and show you what the important thing is. B6 applies to start, so we must start on 6, right? We must have B6 to applies to and B6 the formula. So even though it doesn't apply to that row directly, we want to start our formulas in the same row as it applies to. Then it will work just right. All right, so now we have our profit and loss. Now it looks good. Let's check our sample. It looks exactly the same. Very good. All right, so now we've got to add a little bit more in. I want to add in a refresh report and a print report button. Refresh report. So let's add that in. We're going to insert shapes. We'll insert this box shape and we'll make it probably around like that. 0.2. I don't want to make it too big, so just keep it streamlined. And we're going to call this, let's give it a 1.3, refresh report. So we can give it that. And we're going to center that. Actually, I'm going to right justify that. So we can right justify that and put it in the middle. And then I want to leave room for an icon. Let's format it, give it this uh, look here. Great. I'm going to duplicate that, Control D, because we're going to use that for a print report. And I'm going to put that over here. So we can change this to print report. All right. And we can make that a little bit smaller, 1.2. All right. Now all we need is our icons in here. So we've got our refresh report. We've got our, we've got our print report. Let's insert a picture. And uh, I'm going to insert, let's see, I think I have a refresh icon here. Refresh icon insert yeah that will work just fine let's make that uh, height 0.2 make it small enough so we can fit it on the button and I believe I have a printer icon too so we move that over all right we've got it centered and we use hold the control button click the report and then we're gonna group these this is a shortcut I have you can also click in format and then group also group that'll get you there too I've got the shortcut sitting up here all right now let's add the print report icon insert picture I've got a printer icon somewhere around here printer icon this will work and we're gonna insert that all right let's uh, I'm gonna set that small point two as well give it the same height and dimensions and bring that over here holding the control down clicking the button and grouping one more time all right, now we've got our buttons. Now we just need to assign the macro. So I'm going to select on the entire group, not the individual parts. Right click, assign macro. And we've got two different workbooks open. So let's just go with the, this workbook. And we've got the profit and loss refresh. OK, good. Now when we click here, it's going to refresh. Very nice. OK, notice income doesn't change. And now if we change the dates here, so 1-1, one, one, let's change it to 12. So we get some more dates. And now refresh the report. Good. It's going to, the balances are going to be different. Very good. All right. So we've got that set up. Now all we need to do is create our print report macro. So let's do that. Back into the code we go. We're going to scroll down here. We're going to create a brand new macro. We can call this sub uh, print report. And uh, we want to dimension the print range because we the, the print range is dynamic. So we need to set that dim print range as a string because we need the address of that. And the print range is going to be equal to sheet 1. And of course, we're going to start at the top. B5 is the first B5 all the way to what? All the way to I. I. Let's just look at that. B5, I want to include this. B5 here. I want to go to I and I want to go to the last row. Well, how do we know the last row? The last row we're going to use is B. Wherever B has data, that's our last row. So the last row of B, we can find that out. So let's do that in our code. B5, I, and, and what? And sheet one dot range B 99999, right? Use a dot end XLI. Dot row. That's going to be our last, let's move that up, that is going to be our last row. And then close and dot address. I want the address of that, the actual address of that. Let's just put in address of entire range. Now we've got the range. Now we're ready to set the print area. Now we want to set the print area to that. So we can do this, sheet one dot page setup dot print area what is the print area equals the print range we just defined that above now we're ready to print now we're ready to write code print it's very simple sheet one dot print 
out, okay, and what are we going to print out? Well, I want from what to what, so we can do one from to one, and we just want one copy, and then we can, we don't want a preview, Active Printer, we'll just use the Active Print to File, collate, we don't need Print to File Name, and Ignore Print Area, I don't want to ignore the print area, false. So that's it. Right? That is the macro, that's all we need to do to run that. And now we just need to assign this macro to our new printer button. So up here, right click, this is the sample, right click here, and the assign the macro, and now we've got two macros, so print report. Now we're ready, my default printer is set to Snagit. So when I click print, it's gonna print right to the Snagit, right to my Snagit, which is, which is the desktop printer there. And so now you'll see in, in my Snagit, scroll down, it's already printed out. So we're set, it's got the, we've got the name, not the quality, it's not very good of the print, but we've got everything in here just right. And we've included that. All right, that's great. So now we've got the printer, we've got the profit and loss statement. The only thing I wanna to add to this is when a user changes the date, I want this to automatically refresh. So let's do that. We can do that in the sheet. We have E3 and G3. When a user changes those, I want to refresh the report. So how do we do that? Well, let's copy this macro name first. Copy the name of the macro. And then, of course, in sheet one, and we're going to use change, worksheet change here. Not selection change, worksheet change. So we can get rid of selection change. When a user makes a change to either E3 or G3 run that macro. So we can write that in the code. If not intersect target comma range E3 or G3 close parentheses is nothing. Those cancel each other out. Not and nothing cancel. That means that if the user actually makes a change to those, then what? Then run this report. That's it. There we go. Now, of course, save it. And now when we make a change, it's automatically going to refresh the report. All right. So if the user makes a change to, let's say, the changes to 1.1, one, one, automatically the report is going to refresh. Now, any change is automatically going to refresh. And that is how we create a profit and loss statement. And if you like this, you are going to love the profit and loss statements in the dashboard reports. I would love to show you that to you because that has a drill down capability that you are going to love. In the dashboard masterclass that you will love, you're gonna learn so much, including a profit and loss statement. And in fact, you are going to love this one. This one has dynamic drill down. So if you drill down, you can see all of them transactions. I'm going to show you how to make this in the Dashboard Masterclass. So if you like the profit and loss training, you're going to love the Dashboard Masterclass where I show you a ton of amazing features. And I'll include the links down below. So please do check out this Masterclass. It's going to be really incredible. It's 15 hours of training where you're going to learn techniques that you've never seen before, including custom reports, including the ability to save report as Excel PDF picture or custom report and email, of course. Excel PDF picture. So do get a chance to take a look at that. I'll include the links below. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate your comments, your likes, your shares, and thanks again, and have a great day.